SL 3.5 unit circle. So with this section, we're going to first discuss the unit circle. When we introduce the non-right angled triangle trigonometry, uh, we use the unit circle to give meaning to the trigonometric, trigonometric ratios for obtuse angles. So we have to extend these definitions to include all angles. And for the reason, we need to uh, study unit circle. So the unit circle is defined as a circle with its center at the origin and having a radius of 1. So let's apply this information to the unit circle. Okay. So we unit circle is a circle uh, with its center at the origin and having radius of 1. So we have a radius here and a, its uh, measurement is 1. And means uh, we can extend the domain of the sine and cosine to all real numbers and the process for determining the sine and cosine of any angle data is always follows these two rules. So we always have to start from 1 comma 0, the coordinate 1 comma 0 and move along the unit circle in the counterclockwise direction so counterclockwise is this direction until the angle that is formed between your position and the origin and the positive x-axis is equal to theta or an angle. And sine theta is always equal to the y-coordinate of your point and cosine theta is equal to x-coordinate. So what does it mean is you will always form an angle from the coordinate 1 comma 0 right to your chosen position and when this happens your x coordinate is always equal to cosine theta and your y coordinate is always equal to sine theta Interestingly, interestingly, so you can always uh, measure the tangent from here. So how can you measure the tangent? You can always extend this point here or your chosen point to the x-axis. So let's extend this axis to then your tangent value is always equal to this extended line okay and this concept will uh, apply to the apply later again okay, with a different in different section but the tangent data is always equal to this uh, green line or green this extended line okay so so we now know that the cosine data is the x coordinate of this of your chosen point okay so your chosen point here p so let's call this point p so x coordinate is always the uh, cosine theta your y coordinate of the point p is always sine theta okay and also we know that this is part of the unit circle means your values are always either 1 comma 0 0 comma 1 negative 1, negative 1, comma 0, or 0, comma negative 1. That means from these points on the unit circle, we know that the x value is always between negative 1 and 1, and your y value is always between negative 1 and 1. Okay, And we know that the unit circle equation is always x squared plus y squared equals 1. So we can conclude that we can therefore conclude that for any angle for any angle theta therefore we can conclude that for any angle 
theta cosine theta value, which is x value, is always between negative 1 and 1. And your sine theta value, which is your y value, is always between negative 1 and 1. So once again, we know that cosine theta value is always equal to also equal to x, right? So your cosine theta, because of this, because of this fact that cosine theta is equal to the x coordinate of your point, and we also know that the x value is always between the negative one and one, we can also conclude that the cosine theta is also between negative one and one. And because your y coordinate value is also equal to sine theta value, means since your y value is also between the negative one and one, we can conclude that the sine theta value is also between negative one and one. Okay, then from this fact, this statement, we can finally conclude that cosine square theta plus sine square theta is always equals to 1, right? We are using this equation, x squared plus y squared equals 1, with all other information to derive this statement. Okay, then let's talk about this tangent theta. We have just have discussed that uh, when we have a unicircle, so I'm just going to draw the, the first quadrant of the unicircle at here. Okay, so let's say we have this unicircle and it is on the first quadrant and we have a point P and let's identify an angle okay so we have angle theta okay so when this happens we know that this part is equal to cosine theta uh, we know that this part is equal to sine theta okay that means if we extend Let's extend this x value or x axis and draw another line from point P to x axis like this. Then we can say that uh, the, this line here is also equal to tangent, tangent theta value. Okay, or we can also say that um, a line that extend from the 1 comma 0 value and let's say we there's a line that extend from this 1 comma 0 value and another line that is extended from the P like this when this happens okay uh, we can also say that this line here is also equal to tangent theta. Okay, so uh, since this is a bit confusing, let's put the, some uh, letters in. Okay, so I'm going to call this point here A, point A, and I'm going to call this point here point Q. Okay, and we know that this point here is origin, so it's O. Okay, so let's say the, the line OP, I'm going to say, we know that this is P, right? So if let's say we extended the line OP just like here, I'm extend, I, we already extended it, right? So we have extended line OP to the point Q, okay? Then we can let the intersection between these lines be like Q and Q, so we already say that, and then uh, when point moves, so does the Q, right? And the position of the Q related to the point A, so the position of the Q related to the point A is defined as the tangent function. Okay, so I'm going to say this one more time because, okay, so I'm going to say this is point Q, 
point A. Okay, so when we extend the line OP, so I have point O here, right, and point P here. So when we extend this line OP to the point Q, okay, and uh, if I say that we then we can meet the tangent from the point A. So this is the tangent from the point A. And we can say that the intersection between these lines B, point Q. Okay, so again, I'm going to name it again as point Q. So, which means, this means that when point P moves, so does the point Q. So po the position of the Q is always related to A. So the position of the Q relates to point A and is defined as the tangent function. Okay. And since we have in this case we can also we also have the two triangles, one here, right, one here, and another one here. So we have a two triangles, okay? So I'm going to highlight it again. So one triangle and another triangle. We have two triangles. So in this, these two triangles are equally angular and therefore they are very similar, right? So from this uh, information, we can say that, we can drive that. I'm just going to skip the other like, definition part, okay? But we can derive that the tangent theta is also equals to sine theta over cosine theta. And also since the, the line O to the P is the gradient, uh, has a gradient sine over sine theta over cosine theta, we can also say that tangent theta is gradient of the line OP. Okay, so since the line OP has gradient sine theta over cosine theta, we can also say that the tangent theta is the gradient. Okay, of the line OP. So remember this part. Okay, tangent theta is also gradient of the line OP, or the, the hypotenuse of the triangle that is formed inside of the unit circle. Okay, now then let's talk about the unit circle itself. Okay, so. We actually need to know how to calculate the sine and cosine values that are related to the unit circle. However, for now, what we need to do is we need to try to remember the sine and cosine for angles 30 degree, 45 degree, and 60 degree. Okay, so here I have a 30 degree, 45 degree, and 60 degree. So what you need to do is you first, yes, like it's pain to have a, have to remember all these things. However, you must remember for the angles 30 degree, 45 degree, and 60 degree. And it will make life easier when you know them. Not just in exam, but other times when you need to do quick estimations of these uh, different barriers, okay? So uh, this is the first quadrant. Right, so we have a first quadrant here. So we have a first quadrant here, okay. So with the first quadrant, we know that when we have zero angles, okay, or the, we always, we already know that it always starts counterclockwise, right? So when we have a zero degree, we have coordinate one comma zero, right? Because you need circle. The maximum x values that you can have is 1 or negative 1, right? 
So it's one comma zero. We start from one comma zero, and we have thirty degree, forty five degree, sixty five degree. So when I say thirty degree, I'm referring to the angle that forms between this point and the x-axis. So we have a thirty degree here. Okay. So when we have a thirty degree, we have the cosine x value of square root 3 over 2 and the sine 30 degree value of 1 over 2. When we have a 45 degree, 45 degree means we have line that forms like this and the angle is forming this way. Right, so we have 45 degree. So when you have 45 degree, we have the cosine value of the square root 2 over 2 sine 45 value of square root 2 over 2. Okay, similarly, when you have 60 degree, the angle forms from the x axis. Right, so let's draw this more nicely. So we have angle forming in this way, and we have a 60 degree. Okay, and when this happens, we have the cosine 60 value of 1 over 2 and square root 3 over 2. Okay, and just side story, but 30 degree in radian is pi over 6, right. So 30 degree in radian is pi over 6. The 45 degree in radian is pi over 4. And the 60 degree in radian is pi over 3. Okay, And we know that uh, this value here is actually the 90 degree angle, right? So we have a 90 degree angle okay so we have a 90 degree angle means uh, it's x value I mean it's not like actually we are referring to the y value and we also know that y value always needs to be between 1 and negative 1 so we have a y value of 1 and since it is the point that is directly above from the origin we know that its x value is 0, right? So 0, 1. Then let's talk about the remaining part of the unit circle, okay? So still we are measuring the angle for counterclockwise. However, we do know that uh, the 180 degree part, we know that this x value is negative 1 already. So it's negative 1, 0, right? And for this part here, we know that this is 270 degree. However, this point is directly from the uh, origin. So we know that the x value is 0. And this is the minimum y value. So y value is going to be negative 1, OK? Uh, the, then the remaining part of the, the unit circle, OK? Remaining part is still 35 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree uh, follows this similar trend, okay? However, uh, we know that since we are counting from the right-hand side to the left-hand side or the counterclockwise, we know that this is 120 degree, 135 degree, 150 degree, and 180 degree, 210 degree, 225 degree, 240, 270, and 300, 315, uh, 330, okay? And this is how you're going to memorize it, okay? So this is the like same as like, you know, regular graph quadrant rule, right? So if we have a first quadrant, we have a positive, positive, so it means x value is always positive, y value is also positive. And we have a second quadrant, okay? 
we have x value negative positive y value. When we have a third quadrant, means here, right? So when you have a third quadrant, its x value is negative and y value is also negative. Okay? And when you have the fourth quadrant, so means here, okay, the x value is positive, but the y value is negative. So we are uh, following the same rule as the regular quadrant, right? But we are uh, describing the unit circle here, okay? And we know that, so let's start from the 150 degree, okay? So 150 degree. We know that this is like 150 degree away from the uh, this point one comma zero. However, this part here is thirty degree, right? So, uh, it's going to have the same coordinate as the the thirty degree. So, which means square root three over two and one over two. However, we know the x value going to be in the negative, so we're going to put negative here. Okay, same thing. Uh, with 135 degree, we know that 135 degree, this point is uh, 135 degree away from the coordinate 1 comma 0, but we know that here is about 45 away from the 180 degree. So we're going to use the same coordinate as the 45 degree, which is square root 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2, However, the x value will get negative sign. Okay, same thing with the 120 degree or this point here. So we know that this point is uh, 120 degree away from the 1 comma 0. However, it is a 60 degree away from 180 degree. So we're going to use the same coordinate as a 60 degree. Okay. But its x value going to be negative. Okay, uh, it's all same for the the third and fourth quadrant. Just the signs are changing. So it means the first, this two hundred ten degree we get the coordinate of negative square root three over two, negative one over two, negative square root two over two, negative square root two over two negative 1, 2, negative square root 3 over 2, 1 over 2 here, negative square root 3 over 2, square root 2 over 2, negative square root 2 over 2, square root 3 over 2, and negative 1 over 2. And this is how you fill the unit circle. Okay, I strongly suggest you memorize the first quadrant, okay, the first quadrant, the 30 degree, 45 degree, and 60 degree, and remember how the signs change for the remaining quadrant, okay? Then you have memorized the entire unit circle.